Today we are going to learn how to manage a challenging ostomy. To start off, let's talk about a patient with irritated skin around their stoma. There are two images on the screen with different patterns of skin irritation. Can you guess the cause for each one? The image on the left shows skin irritation on the inferior aspect of the stoma. This is typically caused by leakage of stool as gravity is causing the stool to go from the ostomy downward into the appliance. If you don't have a good seal with your appliance, a small amount of stool can seep under the appliance and cause skin irritation. In the image on the right, the skin irritation is circumferential around the stoma. This is typically caused by an allergic reaction to the adhesive. When patients are sensitive to the adhesive, you should apply a skin preparation to help form a barrier between the appliance and their skin. Step one when dealing with irritated skin is to apply a powder. You can use stoma powder or an over-the-counter antifungal powder. You want to apply enough powder to completely cover the raw skin. You can then use a piece of dry gauze or your hand to lightly brush off the excess powder. Given that the raw skin tends to have extra moisture, the powder will stick to the areas that need it. Once your powder is set, you should add a skin prep. Skin prep comes in many different forms, including sprays, towelettes, and lollipop applicators. Which one you use is not important, but the way you apply it is. You should apply skin prep with a pressing motion as opposed to a wiping motion, which would remove all of your powder. You want to press the skin prep into the raw areas until the powder becomes translucent. Wait a second until the skin prep is tacky when you touch it. Then you can apply your ostomy appliance. This skin prep will help your patients heal raw areas and prevent them from getting more irritated skin in the future. Next, let's talk about how to manage a retracted ostomy. A retracted ostomy occurs when the bowel is pulled back into the abdomen, creating either a very small lip of stomal tissue visible above the skin or causing the stoma to be flush with the skin. Ostomies can be at high risk of retraction if they're placed in skin folds. The trick for managing a retracted ostomy is changing from a flat appliance to a convex appliance. Convex appliances have an extra lip of material circumferentially around the opening for the ostomy. This extra material provides inward pressure on the abdominal wall and helps the ostomy to protrude outward and flatten the surrounding skin folds. Convex ostomies come in two sizes, soft convex, which has a shorter lip and provides less pressure on the abdominal wall, and deep convex, which has a taller lip and can provide additional pressure. Applying a convex appliance is similar to a flat appliance. However, measuring is even more important. You need to make sure that the opening on the appliance is large enough for your ostomy to move through freely, and that the circumference of the lip on the convex portion of the appliance is large enough to apply pressure surrounding the stoma. It is helpful to err on the side of cutting a slightly larger hole in the appliance and using ostomy paste or an ostomy ring to make up the difference. Ostomy paste and rings are more pliable than the ostomy appliance, so they are able to stretch as the stoma gets pushed outside of the abdominal wall. You can then apply the appliance to the abdominal wall and check on the stoma. If you have the correct fit, the convex appliance should help the stoma protrude from the abdominal wall, which can decrease leakage and help with appliance adherence to the skin. Now let's discuss how to manage a prolapsed ostomy. A prolapsed ostomy occurs when bowel is pushed outside of the abdomen. This causes the bowel to fold backwards on itself as it's pushed out of the abdomen and can cause a lot of bowel wall edema. Ostomies can be high risk for prolapse due to technical factors, including creating a fascial defect that is too big, or patient-related factors, including patients who frequently strain their abdominal muscles. To manage a prolapsed ostomy, it is helpful to either use ostomy paste or an ostomy ring. Similar to the previous example, you should cut a slightly larger opening in the appliance to allow the bowel room to expand as it folds onto itself during prolapse. If the opening is too small, it could lead to bowel strangulation. Unlike the rigid appliance, the ostomy paste and rings are more flexible, enabling them to adjust and expand to accommodate the increased diameter during prolapse. To apply an ostomy ring, you should start by stretching your ostomy ring. You want to stretch it just enough to fit around the ostomy. The ostomy ring should be touching the mucosa of the bowel circumferentially. If you overstretch the ring, don't worry, we are going to show you how to fix it. When applying your ring to the abdomen, start at the inferior border of the stoma. Stool runs down into the appliance, so you want to start at the inferior border to make sure you have a tight seal in this area to protect the skin. Use one hand to hold the inferior portion of the ring in place as you stretch it over the stoma. If you overstretch your ring, you will notice that you have some exposed skin at the top of the stoma. You can fix this by cutting your ring at 12 o'clock. You can then reposition each set of the ring appropriately, hugging the ostomy to cover any exposed skin, and overlap the pieces at the top. Once the ring is in place, you can apply the ostomy appliance like normal.
Lastly, let's discuss how to manage a peristomal hernia. A peristomal hernia occurs when contents from inside the abdomen herniate out through the fascial defect and sit in the abdominal wall next to the stoma. Peristomal hernias can contain fat, bowel, or additional intra-abdominal structures. When the contents are sitting next to the stoma in the abdominal wall, it creates a bump. This makes a lopsided surface for the ostomy appliance and can make it very difficult to pouch. The tip for pouching an ostomy with a peristomal hernia is to flatten your landing zone as much as possible. This means you will have to use ostomy rings to build up the low areas to match the height of the hernia. In this example, we fold an ostomy ring in half to create a thickened band of material. You want to apply the ostomy ring to the side opposite of the hernia to build up the abdominal wall. Since your ostomy ring is only on half the ostomy, you can use ostomy paste on the other half. When you press the appliance into the abdomen, the paste will flatten out, but the rings will hold their structure. This will help you create a flat landing zone and have a circumferential seal around the stoma. I'm here with Marie Turner, who's been an ostomy nurse for the last 13 years, and she's going to share three high-yield tips for managing a challenging ostomy. Hello, everyone. First off, if you are having trouble with an ostomy appliance not sticking and leaking, and if it is a flat back skin barrier, you have to move to another appliance. For example, a soft convex or perhaps even a deep convex. Secondly, the stoma paste or the barrier ring must touch the stoma. It must make contact to act like a gasket to seal around the stoma. So let the paste turtleneck up around the stoma and let the ring touch the stoma. It will not hurt the stoma. And lastly, treat periostomal skin irritation with either stoma powder or an antifungal powder. And you must, you must always seal that powder with a skin protectant. It acts like a liquid band-aid, which allows your skin barrier to stick. Thank you, Marie, for sharing your knowledge with us. I hope you all found this useful and can try it out next time you're on the wards. Thanks for listening.